Another hundred, Roddy. Yeah, another hundred it is, Pete. Well, there's a big difference between counting cattle and counting sheep, Pete. Well, what's that? Well, when you're counting cattle, you don't fall asleep. Oh, come on. Well, I guess a cattleman ain't supposed to count sheep anyway, trees and something like that. Boy, being on a drive too long sure affects different people different ways. Some get nervous and irritable, and others get trouble sleeping. Yeah, I ain't had any trouble sleeping. No, but that ain't the worst kind. Oh, what's the worst kind? Them that starts making up jokes. I got 2,850-some-odd head. Yeah, I got the same. We're 150 head short. Well, I guess maybe we better replace them before Mr. Favor gets back. Yeah. Some ranch country up ahead. It's gonna be easy going the next few days. Well, this far from Sedalia, we could probably pick them up for $6 a head. Yeah, the further north we get, the higher they're gonna be. We better pick them up around here. Now, how'd you figure that out? That was easy. Pete, how far ahead did you say that ranch country is? It's about 25 miles. Well, Rowdy, that'll give you time to ride on ahead, fly the steers, and get the brands changed before we catch up to you. You mean you're sending me, Wish? Now, why else would I be giving you the money? I don't know. I thought maybe you would give me a raise or something. Well, see you later, Pete. Right. Do we have to send her out here? Yeah, we do. Why? Well, I could say because Mr. Favor figures it's time he learned how to buy cattle. And I could say it was because we need you here to scout. Yeah. But the real reason is because me and the crew just can't stand any more of his jokes. Come on, get it! Nice looking cattle you have here. Any of them for sale? Mister, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to buy some of these cattle here if, if they're for sale. Look. I have some money. Money right here. I'd like to buy some of these cattle. Big help. Thanks.
the way you hit the board, Mr. Oliver. Mr. Riggins, I should be highly surprised if you even hit the wall. All right. Bullseye. Yeah, next time, why don't you try opening your eyes? Why don't you just open your purse, all right? Two more, Addy. Mr. Oliver's paying. Right, you are. Afternoon, sir. Oh, yeah, sure. Glass of ale, maybe? Ale? Best this side of the pond, sir. What pond? Atlantic Ocean. Oh, no, thanks. We got some whiskey. Well, I didn't exactly come in here for a drink. Uh, I was trying to find out who owns the cattle uh, outside of town there. Now, why would you be doing that? I like to buy them, that's why. What, did I say something wrong? No, sir. Them animals belongs to Sir Richard Hashley. Oh. Well, where can I find them? They're fine stock. Yeah, I know that. You own the cattle line, sir? Yeah, I'm with a herd on the Sedea Trail. We're... Came up about 150 head short. 150 head short. Now, ain't that a blooming shame? Seems downright careless to me. Uh, maybe I'll have a drink after all. What'll it be, sir? You got any rye? Yes, sir. You haven't told me what this Ashley fellow is. Who, oh, Sir Richard? No, I wouldn't rightly know, sir. How much do I owe you for this? One shilling, sir. Twenty-five cents. You just keep riding north, sir. You might find cattle to buy up there. Thanks. As far as you, I'd forget all about the Ashley herd. Yeah, I'll try and do that. Only trouble is, I got a real good memory. Wants to buy the Ashley herd, does he? Well, blooming fat chance he's got. Well, I've never seen you before. Well, no, I've never been here before. Who are you? Uh, Roddy Yates. I'm Laura Ashley. Ashley? Yes. You are the man who was looking at our cattle earlier today, aren't you? Yeah. I didn't think that Indian understood a thing I was saying. He understood. They are for sale. Are you prepared to pay cash? Well, yeah, I got the money with me. Only I got the idea Mr. Ashley didn't want to sell. From them? Yeah. Well, he's my father. I ought to know. Now, what did you uh, intend to pay? Oh, um, uh, six, maybe seven dollars a head. Why don't you tie your horse to the back of the surrey? I think we can talk more comfortably in here. Oh, yeah, sure. Higgins, what wouldn't you give to be in Regis Park right now? Taking in the air and watching all the lovely girls passing by. I'd give my soul if I had one. Yeah, Pop, what I just seen. What you ain't seen is the dust back here. I'll thank you to clean it up. Miss Laura and that driver chap. Uh oh. What about them? They went off together. Where's Winch? Over at the county seat buying provisions. Well, he's got to know about that drover. Somebody's got to tell him. Oh, it's a 15-mile ride. Mr. Winch wouldn't like it if he weren't told right off. Yeah. All right, Higgins. Come on, we're both riding. All right. <sighs> Better them than me. Mr. Winch will be proper angry when he is.
Look, there. That's Rim Rock. I often go up there. From the top, you can see all around. But nothing I ever see is England. Oh, well, it ain't. It's Texas. Yes, I know. But sometimes I, I like to fool myself. I go up there and pretend that it's an English hill. And that surrounding me is the gentle green of an English countryside. I hate your Texas. <laughs> it ain't mine, Miss Ashley. I'm sorry. I, I suppose we ought to be talking about the cattle you're going to buy. Yeah, I hope we're not going to have too much trouble about that. Why should there be? Well, those people back in town, oh, Those people. My father brought all of them with him from England. He, he paid them money, he bought them farms. And now they've all turned against him. Why, why would they do that? Which? Who? What? Someone we're afraid of. Is he the one? Yes. You should not have told her. I'm not afraid of Winch. You should be. Do you like the house, Mr. Yates? Well, one thing's for sure. I've never seen anything like it. My father had an architect do it. It's Georgian. Yeah, I was in Georgia about two or three years ago. <laughs> Not Georgia, Mr. Yates. King George. Oh, what's he got to do with it? The, the Georgian period. Sure. Oh, Miss Laura. Oh, Tompkins, this is Mr. Yates. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, sure. May I, uh, <clears throat> may I take your hat, sir? What for? Well, <clears throat> Father? Father? <sighs> Chopin. Very pretty. Uh, father, this is Mr. Yates, my father, Sir Richard Ashley. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Yates? This is the gentleman who's going to buy our cattle. Oh? I wasn't aware we were selling them. But, but we, we have to, Father. It's the only way that we can... Does Winch know? No, but I... Well, I... I think we should have waited. Father, can't we for just once do something without Winch's approval? Well, my dear, he, uh, he is the foreman. And a great deal of time was put in getting that herd together. The cattle do belong to you. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Um, where's your ranch, uh, Mr. Yates? Oh, uh, no ranch. I've got a cattle drive over on the uh, Sedalia Trail. Oh, my word. That trail's quite away from here. Yeah, you must be tired. No, not too bad. Oh, thirsty, perhaps. Oh, Laura, uh, get Tompkins to uh, bring some tea, would you please? Thank you, my dear. Well, come sit down. Oh, no, I trust you're not in a great hurry. Uh, no, as long as I get the cattle I want. Oh, yes, yes, I understand that, of course, yes. Do wish you'd talk to Winch first, though. Well, you see, this fellow Winch, he wasn't around. Well, he is just the foreman, ain't he? Oh, yes. Yes, he's just the foreman. A liking for Chopin is an indication of decadence, I feel. It's so, uh, well, it's so fragile. It's so oversweet. Don't you think so, Mr. Yates? Uh, well, I, I wouldn't want to be sure. 
Now, uh, I can highly recommend that tea. I have it blended and sent from England. Of course, we don't grow tea in England, uh, as you, uh, well, you, you knew that, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Betty Four, sir. They're cakes. Okay. I suppose you'll be riding back to your herd soon, Mr. Yale. Well, no, actually, the, the herd joins me. I just got to pick up the bees I need, and that's all. Well, you can get them here, then, can't you, Father? Well, speaking of Chopin, I detest business, don't you, Mr. Yates? Oh, all I'm trying to do is buy 150 head of cattle at six... seven dollars a head. All right. How soon does the herd catch up to you? In two or three days. Oh, well, now we needn't discuss it over tea. Well, I was kind of hoping to get a bill of sale so I could start changing the brand. Oh, yes, of course, I understand it. Uh, Laura, have you asked Mr. Yates to spend the night? No. Oh, well, I think you should, my dear. All right, Mr. Yates, I'll, uh, I'll see you at dinner. Yeah. You know, I, I get a feeling your father didn't want to sell. Don't worry, Mr. Yates, he will. Now, if you'll excuse me, it'll take me just a little bit longer to dress for dinner than you. It's very pretty. Make it net for yourself? Poor Miss Laura. Beautiful girl, Miss Laura. Miss Laura is very beautiful. Her and her father are real nice people. It would be better if you rode away. Now. I've just been invited for dinner. It would be better if you rode away. Why? That house. It should never have been built. It's Georgian. Don't know whether King George built it or not. It does not belong here. What you're saying, does this have anything to do with this fellow winch? It has to do with death. find my clothes. I, um, I have them here, sir. Them? Yes, we, um, dinner is almost ready, sir. Oh, well, great. I'm hungry and everything, but what the... We, we dressed for dinner, sir. Yeah, well, I hadn't exactly planned on coming down like this. <laughs> Very good, sir. Yeah, real great. Now, where are my clothes? I, um, took the liberty, sir, of putting them in the laundry tub while you were taking your bath, sir. They were, they were very dusty, sir. Dusty. They were filthy. Drover's clothes always are. Well, they'll be quite dry in the morning, and I, I shall iron them very carefully, sir. What are you trying to do? Get me thrown off the drive? I, I'm sorry, sir. I gotta wear these. I think you'll find them very comfortable, sir. Sir Richard had them made for himself several years ago in Bond Street, sir. Oh, Bond Street, San Antonio. Bond Street, London, sir. London, England? London, England. Oh, fancy dress party. Formal attire, sir. Well, if I gotta. What are these? Boots, sir. 
Boots? Uh, some kind of a shoe, it looks like to me. In the vernacular, perhaps. In the where? Uh, perhaps I should explain, sir. Yeah, will you do that? Yes, you see, sir, uh, you Americans have fallen into the unfortunate habit of uh, referring to boots as shoes, sir. Oh, we have. Yes, sir. Well, I guess it's too late to do anything about it now, so uh, I'll just put on these shoes and clothes. You can go on down and tell them I'll be along in a few minutes. I should really stay and help you dress, sir. Why? Well, I... I should really, sir. No, you won't. I... I should, sir. Now, look here. I... I really should, sir. Ah, oh, our guest is late. He, uh... Maybe having a little difficulty, Sir Richard. Dif difficulty with what? I gather they don't frequently dress for dinner during a, a trail drive. Oh. No, I imagine they never do. Barbarians. Father, did you sign the bill of sale? I don't approve of selling the cattle. But that money will take us to England. I have obligations here. To whom? Besides, I'm not so sure I want to go. It's been so many years, it would be like a foreign country to me. You're not happy here. It's been 20 years since Mother died, and you've done nothing but... Drink? Every night? Perhaps. I don't think I'd be happier anywhere else. Doesn't it matter that I would be? Ah, oh, here's our guest. Oh, come in. Come in, Mr. Yates. All right, Tom, guess you can serve now. The clothes fit you perfectly. Well, uh, uh, we're, Father and I are about the same size. You didn't wear a size 12 shoe, though. A boot, I mean. That must be how you look when you were young, Father. Oh, not half as handsome, my dear. He is handsome. Uh-uh, now, Laura. Mr. Yates, I know the dinner table isn't the place for discussing business, but I thought perhaps... If La I... Laura, please. I merely wanted to say, Mr. Yates, you'll have no trouble in buying the herd. None at all. <laughs> Where is he? Where is who, Mr. Winch? The Dover. I don't know nothing about him. You were with the herd today. You must have been the one who told him. I didn't tell him anything. Who did you tell? Miss Laura. Put the gun away. on using that knife. Hey, Winch. Yeah? You got an idea where you can find that drover? Having supper. Over the main house. With Miss Lara. Come on. Drink your drink. Have another one. No, no, no thanks. Father, I'd like to show Mr. Yates the garden. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sure Mr. Yates has seen a man drunk before. You know, Mr. Yates, it's a funny thing. My daughter doesn't like to see me drink. 
Sir, if you'll excuse me. Got to get him back to England. Yeah, I guess so. This, this cruel rough life, it's too much for him. We've tried to make a decent life here, but it's impossible. I... Mr. Winch. No, I didn't knock this time. No more than you're selling the cattle. The decision is not yours to make. I worked two years getting that herd together. My father and I are very grateful for your hard work. I'm not looking for gratitude. In a couple of three years, we'll be driving our own herd north. We, oui, Mr. Winch. My name is Ben. I'd forgotten. There are a lot of other things you've forgotten. But right now, all you have to remember is the cattle aren't being sold. I think you'd better leave. I don't take orders from you. I think you better do what the lady says. There aren't any cattle for sale on this ranch, mister. Your horse has been fed, so have you. Pack up your gear and go. That's up to Sir Ashley and Miss Laura. On this ranch, it's up to me. Not the way I see it. Well, I better make you see it different, then. All right. I won't break up your fine furniture. But he better be out of here by morning. Now you see why my father and I have to leave. You don't have to worry. You can get rid of him any time you want. It isn't quite that simple. I did promise to show you the garden, didn't I? Yeah. My mother loved it so much. I suppose it reminded her of England. Her first name was Eden, so father called it Garden of Eden, just as he always called her Lady Eden. I don't remember her very well. She... She died when I was quite young. But I always think of her as being very tall and fair and, and always dressed in white. Sort of like that statue. Of course, I don't imagine she looked like that. I wish she was still alive. I sure never seen a place like this, ma'am. Nor people like my father and myself. That's right, ma'am. Oh, please, not ma'am. My name's Laura. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All these rose bushes were brought from England. Seems rather unfair, though, that they're still blossoming in Mother's. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. How can I? This is so, so terribly unfair to you. There's no reason why you should be bothered with, with my troubles. You should ride on. Buy your cattle somewhere else where, where you won't be bothered by a silly, frightened girl. I'm not afraid of Winch. No, I don't think you are. doing this without orders from Winch. They ain't his cattle. But he runs the place. And he also sleeps late. He had to ride into town. You go help the Indian, will you? What's this supposed to be? It's a trail brand. That's what it's supposed to be. You've been helping him? That's right. I didn't give you any orders. I did. 
You take orders from me, nobody else. How many cars you branded? A couple of dozen. And that's all you're gonna brand. Look, maybe your hands take orders from you, but I don't. I know where you got your orders. You can forget them. I bought these cattle and I'm gonna brand them. You got a bill of sale? That's right. Who signed this? My father. It's his name, but who wrote it? You? I'll take the bill of sale. Go ahead. It's nothing but a piece of paper. It's a bill of sale signed by the owner of these cattle. Did you see him sign it? I didn't need to. Miss Laura brought it to me. Next time you buy cattle, make sure the bill of sale is signed by the person who's supposed to sign it. Are you saying this is a forgery? I'm saying Ashley didn't sign it. Well, I don't care what you're saying. You're holding up work. Now get out of here. You're gonna have to kill me. Hey, Winch. Is this what you went into town for? He didn't send for us, if that's what you mean, young fella. What are you doing here? We got an interest in what's going on here. What interest? I see you've been branding cattle, Mr. Yates. That's right, cattle I bought and paid for. Well, you might have paid for them, but uh, you ain't bought them. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Begging your pardon, Miss Laura, it's you that don't know. What is it I don't know? Mr. Winch here owns half the herd. I'm sorry, Laura. I didn't want you to know. Well, he only owns half the herd. The other half you could... Well, it wouldn't make 150 head. Well, it wouldn't make any difference, no, Al. Because the other half belongs to us. No oh, one ever said anything. We all love Sir Richard, Miss Laura. He's a good man. But he ain't got no head for business. We had to buy the herd, because otherwise the ranch would have gone to pot. He didn't have the money to keep it up. <sighs> Seems like I've been making a fool of myself. You had help from her. So did I. I ain't much at apologies, Mr. Winch. Find me someone who is, and I'll take lessons. I'm like you, Mr. Yates. I didn't come into this natural. The most I wanted to be was, was a foreman when I started. I never met people like, like the Ashleys before. They live in a different world. Why do they do that? Well, they're, they're English somebodies. Blue blood, I guess, is the word. They're trying to keep something alive that can't be kept alive out here. Tradition. Yeah, it is sort of strange. Yeah, it took me a while to understand. They can't sell their kind of house. They can't sell the silver you ate off. They can't sell what has to be sold to take a trip to England, especially for a woman who wouldn't be welcome there. Why wouldn't she be welcome there? Mr. Yates? Yeah. It's a good thing you came along. It's about time she knew the cattle weren't hers. I'm trying to protect her. Hoping to build up a herd and take it up to Sedalia so she could keep on playing the English lady. 
if that's what you really wanted. You don't want her to go back to England, do you? I'd be lying if I said I did. It's a good thing I didn't brand more than a couple dozen head. It's the best thing I can do is get back to my herd. The only thing is, uh, she's got the money. Let's get back to the house and get it. Father, is the herd yours? What do you mean? Did you sell the cattle? Yes. I'm sorry, Laura. I, I saw no reason to tell you before. Thank you, Father. Thank you for letting me know what everyone else knew before I knew it. Yates decided not to buy the cattle here. Yeah, that's right. Oh, thank you. There's only one thing, though. Uh, I... The money, yes, yes, of course. I'll get it for you. Excuse me. Lord! You can't do this. You can come with me, Father, or stay here. But we have no money. I have. It doesn't belong to us. Doesn't... Look, Miss Laura, that money belongs to my trail boss. You bought those cattle, Mr. Yates. Take them. They weren't yours to sell. Well, then take the house, or the tea service, or the garden, oh, maybe. Laura, now listen to me. Only if you come with me, Father. We can't go back to England. Why can't we? Because we don't belong there. Of course we do. We, we should go back to the land where... What do you mean, we don't belong there? Well, where we are is good enough. I, I wouldn't be unhappy about it. I, I wouldn't be too eager to leave it. Why don't we belong there? I was cashiered from my regiment for stealing regimental funds. I wasn't jailed because I was a gentleman. But I can't go back. Is that clear? Then I'll go without you. One thief in the family is enough. Why don't you try and stop me? Thief. <laughs> Take money that doesn't belong to you. Maybe I'll do a better job of it than you did. Now, if there's only one way to stop you, and stop you, I must. Now, listen, Laura. Lady Eden was childless. Childless? She was my mother. She died before you were born. If she wasn't my mother, who was? I, I was lonely after she died, and I married again. Who was my mother? I kept the marriage secret. It was easy in this isolated spot to pass you off as Lady Eden's child. Who was my mother? Your mother is Oniwa. Oniwa? My nurse. She brought me up after Mother died. She's a, she's a servant. She's your mother and my wife. An Indian. I can't ask forgiveness. Just understanding. I'm a, I'm a half breed. Stay. I'm the English lady who's 
His elegance impressed you so. It even frightened you at dinner last night, didn't it? Yeah, it, it did that. And afterwards, when you kissed me, you thought you were kissing a lady, didn't you? Well, you were wrong. You were kissing a squaw. Aren't you ashamed of yourself kissing a squaw? Look, it didn't make no difference to me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. But I don't want... I don't want your charity or your money. Ben? You wanted me, didn't you? Did you know what you wanted was a half-breed? Not Indian, not white, but something in between. You better go inside. No, I don't belong there. That's for gentle folk. Gentle folk and thieves. <laughs> I think he'll be all right. She had no money. There's only one place she could go. Rimrock. Only one thing she could do. Kill herself. We'd better get your horse. He was hurt trying to stop her. Stop her? Yes, I, I told her the truth, that you were her mother. Why? She wanted to go to England. You should have told her much sooner or much later. You're right. You're always right. I, I was a fool. Come on, let's go. to see us coming after her. What choice do we have? None. Something I don't know. Nothing I told you is as important. No, not to you, maybe. You're just the same. But I'm not. I'm something different, something I despise. Laura, I want you to come home with me. Home? Home to Lady Eden's house, Lady Eden's garden. They belong much more to you than they ever did to her. Don't come near me. But you can't throw your life away just because I've been a fool and a coward. All you think about is what you've been. Well, what about what I'm to become? What in my life is worth saving? Laura, listen, I didn't know you before yesterday, and tomorrow I'm riding back to the herd, so what I have to say doesn't mean much. Say anything you want, Mr. Yates. Anyone can now. Look, I had supper at your place last night. In the garden, I kissed a very beautiful girl. Not a lot to me. Night you didn't know it was a squaw. I wasn't kissing a label or a name. It was a woman. I won't forget her for a long time unless... Oh, I wouldn't want to spoil your beautiful dreams, Mr. Yates. <laughs>
dead. Leave me with my dead. You've got the living to look after. Richard's dead. He fell off Rim Rock. You better help him. Then my... my being what I am doesn't make any difference to you? You're no different than you ever were. But you still want me. I never wanted anyone else. Oniwa, come into our house, mother. Mr. Yates, you've been put to a lot of trouble. If you still want the cattle. Uh, deal's over. Thanks. Sir Richard thought that all the friends who looked up to him because he was an English gentleman would be disappointed if he married an Indian. He wanted to spare their feelings. The pity about it is that all these years, everybody knew. Buy the cattle? Well, yeah. I, uh, well, no. Here's the money back. Well, you see, uh, it, the bees, they were for a herd, and it was going to take Winch a year or so to get them together. And Laura, she was. Well, there's a lot of other ranches north of here, anyway. Oh, I guess there are. Well, next time we're going to send Pete. You see, people there. <laughs> Okay. Hey, sure be rough on the herd to get through there. Sure looks that way. I don't know if that canyon goes all the way through, but if it did, it'd save three or four days. Yeah, we don't need the time that bad. That was an idea. You mean it was my idea, and a bad one. I didn't say that. Just keep your maps away from me after this. <laughs> There's no harm done, besides it gave Rowdy a chance to play trail boss for a day. Hey, Pete. Huh? You hear that? What? I'm so crazy, I'd swear it was a bugle call. Vehicle call out here? Wait a minute, listen. Uh, it's just a trick of the wind, I guess. Right. I'm kind of sorry them two didn't come right up further into the canyon. Just a chance to see if I got a good boar or not. Yeah. Civilian. Yeah. What else have we seen all this time? How many bandit charges come our way? Well, I got no complaints. Since Shiloh, I got no complaints. There's a war going on, and what are we doing? You think of anything better than guarding this canyon? <laughs> How many times I ask you that? Is there any more peaceful way to fight a war? What, do you want to fight a war peaceful? You want to make it easy for the Yankees? Oh, no. There's no use you getting riled at me. Try the Major. 
All these good fellas playing checkers. Hey, Sergeant! You see them, too? Yeah, I've seen them. Another pair of prospectors. Yeah, that's about all we ever see around here. around with that horn? No, I didn't. Up here, what else is there to mess around with? If that major would get off his pig head and act like a major, I'd have you whooped until you couldn't stand. Sergeant, you're speaking of your commanding officer. I'd break you in this lice bit camp in one day. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then what would you do? I'd march this whole jumping outfit back to Fort Danielson. Oh, I see. You think the Yankees have taken it and you want to surrender. I'm going to tell you again. The Yankees ain't been out this way. And if they had, we'd have heard about them or seen them. And if we'd have heard about them or seen them, what do you think we'd have done, huh? Answer me that. Don't ask me. Ask your friend, the Major. Your move, Major. I know it's my move, you grubby scarecrow. Then what do you wait for? The end of the war? It might be closer than you think. Don't let it worry you. The Union won't be too harsh on you, Rebs. You think the Union's got a chance? With a drunken storekeeper leading them? General Grant did keep store once. Worked in a tannery, too. Perfect training for a military career. Mm, he managed to tan quite a few hides at Vicksburg, Major. He wasn't facing General Lee personally at the time. As a matter of fact, there's a great deal of difference between a siege general and an attack general. And there's a great deal of difference between a winner and a loser. Lee will not be licked by Grant. Maybe. Maybe you forget you're a prisoner of war, Mr. Perky. Maybe I remember I'm a civilian and you burned my ranch, stole my livestock and provisions. Requisition. Maybe that too, but first, you stole it. We won't go into that again. How many times have I got to tell you that the Confederacy will grant you full compensation? There ain't going to be a Confederacy after the war. I don't mind so much what you did. It was lonely on the farm. It's awful lonely. Did your move, Major. How long since you've been relieved, Major? Been awaiting, Major. Thank you, Sergeant. The relief will come, Mr. Perky. How long have you been telling me that? It's bound to come. The only reason we could have been forgotten out here is because the war's been going badly. It's a possibility I've had to face for a long time. Mm, you've never faced it. I would have been informed, Mr. Perky. You'd never have believed it. Even if you got a letter. A personal letter from General Lee. <laughs> Strays all over.
green sleeves. My heart will always be as restless as the sea searching for a perfect love I'm sure that there must be someone who's just for me Yo. one Move. to share a back. perfect yes. love he sure is he might think the night guards ought to be listening Ways Yo. yeah where are the night guards? Only like me, touching the land, yet forever at sea. I know there'll be a day my eager heart will say, you I take it everything's fine. A perfect. Love it's fine. It's, it's better than that. It's better than fine. Except the night guard isn't Ways out. Nobody's on the picket line. Men that are supposed to be sleeping aren't. Are you well, 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 Miss like Danvers, there we, uh, well, she had a broken wheel. Uh, we had to help her fix it. The fix the organ, too? Yet hmm? forever oh, no, no, there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. The organist and the lady gonna be with us for a while? I know. Well, uh, no, I... Well, Wishbone invited him for supper. Well, I'd have done the same thing if she was my grandmother. You found a perfect love. You know, with one thing and another... The herd hasn't moved since she arrived. Well, I guess it hadn't. Well, that is fine. Just fine. Sure is, Mr. Baker, just fine. I don't know who you are, but I was singing. Oh, uh, Miss Danvers, this is Mr. Favor. He heads this outfit. She really sings great, boss. And I don't like to be interrupted. The only trouble is, this is a trail camp, not a saloon. Don't try that again. Suppose you take your hands off Miss Danvers, cowboy. Do you know who she is? No. Who? And Danvers has sung before all the crown heads of Europe. Well, none of them was driving cattle for me. They didn't mention if they were. Just who are you, mister? My name is Nelson Hoyt. I'm Miss Danvers' manager and accompanist. Suppose you try managing to say goodnight, both you and Miss Danvers. I beg your pardon? For what? Are you dismissing it? Just a suggestion. You want us to leave? These men have a herd to move at sun. You're very welcome to bed down here, if you do it now. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Coffee, Marsh. Sure, Mr. Baver, but if you give me a cup, I'll fill her up. I don't want a coffee. Fill that. There you are, Mr. Baver. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Why'd Mr. Favor take no coffee from me, Mr. Wispo? Cup was dirty. Well, it wasn't dirty. It was his own cup. Well, a man likes to put his best foot forward, honey. What do you want? You talk too much for this time of morning. I ain't said nothing. You never do. Well, we're going to get fed this morning, or ain't we? Good 
Danvers, I thought you might like some coffee. Well, that's very considerate. This of is fresh coffee. Oh, well, in that case, of course. Mmm, it is fresh. There's various opinions about Wishbone's cooking. Usually starting with not too bad and ending up with let's get a rope. <laughs> everybody agrees his coffee is the best this side of the Mississippi. Oh, well, I think it's the best coffee I ever had. Better than Paris, Sam? Uh? Um, Nelson, why don't you get the horses and harness up, huh? Where are you heading, Miss Danvers? Rojo Canyon. My father has a ranch there. I'm taking him back to Philadelphia with me. That'd be a pretty big change for him, wouldn't it? Well, Mr. Favor, I've made a lot of money, and my father's worked very hard. So I bought a house in Philadelphia for us. Funny thing. You remind me so very much of someone from Philadelphia. Really? Who? Oh, well, you know, my two little girls are in Philadelphia. Oh? Was your wife? No. I'm with an aunt. A long time since I've seen them. Not since the war, as a matter of fact. I was in Europe when the war broke out. Were you in the army? Mm hmm. My father was too old. You know, I haven't heard from my father in six years. Of course, he never was much to write, but... Look, we're going right by Rojo Canyon. Um, it might be safer if you went along with us. Well, I wouldn't think you'd want any excess baggage. Crown heads of Europe didn't complain. I don't think you think much of the crown heads. No, I don't know too much about them, but I sure can't argue with their taste. Will you be on the trail long? Till Sedalia, Missouri. And then what? I've almost forgotten what my little girls look like. Well, that isn't right. No. No, it isn't. I told you this was dangerous country. Well, I don't think it's dangerous. You don't come out to play Ring Around the Rosie. <laughs> so formal, I'd have put on my Sunday spurt. Question is, what are they being so formal about? Sounds like a bunch of yearlings, don't they? I swear not one of them's over 20. That's what's protecting our frontier these days. This frontier's in trouble. I wish don't close up shop. They may be hungry. It's always good to meet the army halfway. Sergeant Madsen, C2, 4th United States Cavalry. Three days out of Fort Flagg. Your favor, trail boss. I don't know how many days out of San Antonio. Hey, your men look tired. Men? You're mighty kind, Mr. Favor. Maybe they could use a hot meal? We have our own rations, mister. Corporal, we accepting Mr. Favor's invitation? Yes, sir. What's wrong, Mr. Wishbone? What's wrong is Mr. Favor's just invited the whole United States Cavalry to breakfast. I think you might ask us first. Well, would we have said no? We mighty well might have. Let's open that. Eat him! Prepare to dismount! Prepare to dismount! Prepare to dismount! Oh! Dismount! 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 Oh! Dismissed. Dismissed! Corporal, run a picket line. Yes, sir. Take my horse. I say, we got some uh, fresh water. Streams back camp. Makes you think I got water in this. You in the war, Mr. Favor? That's right. Officer? Uh-huh. How would you feel about leading a detachment like mine? 
Oh, a bunch of foot and mouth greenhorns like that. Thanks, but no thanks. This kind of helps me forget how green they are and what can happen to them out here. Do you know how old my corporal is? Nineteen. He's the oldest. The rest of them, well, another year or two, I'm going to have to teach them how to shave. Never seen a company that young. Towards the end of the war, a lot of kids were joining up, but... Uh... Sounds as if you'd been fighting for the South. Well, I better go make sure my veterans watch behind their ears. Didn't you never see a sergeant before? The army was crawling with him. Wasn't they all? Thing is, I've seen that sergeant before on the end. Yeah? Well, he wasn't a sergeant then. His name wasn't Matson. It's Matson now. No, uh, that ain't the name I don't remember. It ain't? No. Well, it ain't important. seem to be very much of it. They don't. You know, you're right. How's that? That's fine. Thank you. I thought drovers ate a lot. Hey, he's a growing boy, Mr. Wishbone. Grown into what? An elephant? All right, keep line moving. Come right on with it. Maybe you'd better get started now, Mr. Hoyt. Uh, 3,000 steers raised a lot of dust. It might be smarter to be riding ahead of the herd. Might be smarter if we went off in an entirely different direction. But Nelson, we're going the same way. It could be our first mistake. Not really. I guess we won't be seeing you anymore. Well, that's not a very good guess, Mr. Favor. Sea troops escorting you through the danger area. Orders of Colonel Merriweather, Fort Flag. Oh, what danger area? Canyon. Two and a half miles through, 25 miles around. It figures you'll take the canyon way. Save three days. If the canyon's that narrow, we'd lose more beef trying to squeeze them through than be worth the time saved. Well, you might lose them anyway. To what? Raiders. What kind of raiders? When we find out, you find out. What does that mean? I don't know, Mr. Faber. I just don't know. And, uh, what good would your veterans be? I've got my orders, and they'll fight, I think. Sergeant Matson, we've got no orders about escorting any cattle drive. 25 drovers, 25 men. Corporal, did you ever fire a gun at a minute fired back at you? No, sir. Neither did they. What difference does that make, sir? As poor as your aim. And don't call me, sir. But we got no right to get the drovers mixed up in our corporal. I'm Army. I've been Army a long time. They give me a job to do, I do it. Any way I can. Yes, sir, except I... Except nothing, and don't call me, sir! Oh, <laughs> 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 
turning west in a few miles, uh, it might mean we'll miss your father's ranch. That's what I thought. Well, this is goodbye, then. Well, I thought it was all right with you. I'd ride along with you to the ranch. Would you? Why wouldn't he? I understand there's some raiders operating in this area. That's one of the reasons I want to ride along with you. You follow Mr. Faber, Nelson, will you? You giving me a choice? Follow him, Nelson. Hey, Roddy. Hmm? Looks like the high command's coming to visit. Yeah, either one leg short or another, or else he's been drinking something besides coffee. Mr. Favor, get back yet, gentlemen? Uh, no, he's gonna catch up to us. Well, the only rough going to be through the canyon. Yeah, that's right, except we ain't going through the canyon. Of course you are. Did Mr. Favor tell you before he left? No, he didn't. I guess he forgot it. Mr. Favor, don't forget things like that. You call me a liar? No, I'm not calling you a liar. And now he goes through the canyon. Roddy's in charge of Mr. Favor's away. He'll decide that. And you'll follow Mr. Favor's orders. Yeah, I will. When he gives them to me. What's your name? I'm Jim Quince. You mind if I talk to you alone? I was just leaving. You've been watching me ever since this morning. Why? Well, I ain't sure. Uh, you remind me of someone. You in the war? Army of the Confederacy, Sergeant. Jim Stewart's Calvary. We fought most anywhere. Battle of the Wilderness. We were there. I know you were. Would the name Thorpe mean anything to you? <laughs> well, it sure would. The Colonel commanded the troops on our left flank. Seen him once with Jeb, but... Oh, wait. That's who you remind me of. Thorpe. Thorpe is who I am. I was. Well, you were a colonel then. Yeah, in the wrong army. One had lost. After war, I did the only thing I could join the other army. Using the name of Matson? Why? Oh, I guess I thought I'd fool him. Army life was the only life I knew. I never fooled anybody. Colonel Thorpe. Sergeant? I was lucky to get that high. You wondered why I was sent out here on a mission with a handful of kids? I did. Well, the answer's easy. They don't want me at Fort Flag. They don't expect me to accomplish my job when they get back. I'm going to. Well, I sure hope that. It's not enough. I need more than hope. I need soldiers. I need even one soldier to give me a fighting chance. Well, uh, Colonel, could... Could I be that soldier? I'd be on it. Only just keep it sergeant, will you? <laughs> yes, sir. We'll be riding with you for another two or three miles, and then we'll split off to the canyon. Well, uh, when you do, uh, I'll be riding with you. Sorry, Ann. It could have been an accident, Ann. But most likely it was those raiders Matson was talking about. What happened? What happened? Ann! Ann, stay here. No! Boy.
One thing I miss is my daughter. She had a voice, a voice people went along with. I didn't think you were a music connoisseur. I ain't. What I meant was, when Melissa started to sing, people stopped and listened. And when it's Texas you're talking about. Major? Sergeant? All right, Jenkins, make your report. Yes, sir. There's a cattle drive not more than five miles from here, sir. We're not at war with cattle. Yes, sir, but there's a detail of Union cavalry with them cattle, sir. Sergeant, most of the men. Yes, sir. Well, it'll be a while before you finish that game, Mr. Perky. If we ever do. It's burned down years ago. Years ago? How do you know? Condition the woods in, dried out, and other things. But are you sure that's your father's ranch? Of course I'm sure. There were things to indicate it belonged to a man named Perky. Well, that's understandable. Miss Danvers' real name was Melissa Perky. Does it mean anything about my father? I don't know. Except for one thing, there wasn't any sign of uh, a body around. Would there be after all this time? Well, if raiders had burned the place down, they wouldn't bother to bury anyone. Well, maybe he's still alive then. It's possible. The thing to do is check with the nearest towns. They might have some information. We'll get back to the drive, check with Pete, send him out to any towns around. You really think he might have got away? Till I find out otherwise. <laughs> Think it's been hard waiting here all this time. Think you've been waiting alone? Now well, maybe the waiting is over. The Yankees have been sighted, headed this way. They're escorting a cattle drive. We don't know whether the herd's a decoy or not, but our orders are to hold Rojo Canyon at all costs. The Yankees' mission is to attack us. We'll be ready for them. Sergeant, prepare for action. Yes, sir. Jenkins, come with me. All right, men. You heard what the Major said. There's Yankees on the way. Now, let's get ready. You six men, over on the field page. You four men, come over left flank. All right, over here on the right flank. You two over here. Come on, move! No. <laughs> you plan on going hunting, Jim? Huh? What other reason you got for packing your rifle? Don't miss much speed, Joe. Pro Canyon's up in the mountains. Uh-huh. Now the cavalry's going in there, and I'm going with him. That Matson must be a powerful talker. Well, his name is Thorpe. Colonel Thorpe in an army that just ain't anymore. I fought in that army, Joe. He needs some men, not the kids he's got. <laughs> tell Mr. Favor I didn't deserve it. I just went off to do a job and he's doing. Will you tell him that? I'll tell him. All right. Thank you. Well, there's several towns around here. If Miss Denver's father is alive, he could be in any one of them. I'll send some men out in the morning, then. Hey, there's Scarlett. He must have mislaid Quint. Favor, I'm leaving the drive. You doing what? Well, you see, there's a job got to be done. I ain't deserting, Mr. Favor. I don't want to draw my time. Where's Quince? He never deserted, neither. Where is he? With well, them cavalry kids. Is that where you're going? You got any idea what you're getting into? Sure. I ain't leaving you short-handed. But if Quince and me don't make it back, you like to pick up a couple of drovers. I know my business, and I try to mind it, too. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. I'm going anyway. You know, boss, maybe he's right. About what? All those kids getting into something they can't handle. I'll see what they're getting into. If there's a gang of raiders up in the hills, they'll duck for cover. They're not going to tangle with the cavalry. I was supposing they do. That's the cavalry's problem, not ours. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
kids are sleeping like babies. Yeah. We'll go in at first light. You men better get some rest. Herds avoid in the canyon. That's right, sir. Must be a big concentration of Yankee troops north. Not our problem. But their cavalry's camped at the mouth of the canyon, sir. Our problem. Sergeant, I want you to impress on our men that under no circumstances must anyone be permitted to come closer than rifle shot to this camp. If the enemy discovers how small a force we... I understand, we... sir. Dismissed. Yes, sir. Very small detachment, ain't it? That's right. Maybe all they're after is keeping you bottled up here. We've been bottled up here for years. They've got to attack. And when they do, we'll wipe them out. We'll wipe them out? You're forgetting I ain't on your side, Major. Once this war's over, there won't be sides. They don't know the terrain. They're waiting for first light, and we'll be waiting for them. Your move. I don't know what's in there. You boys ever do any Indian fighting? Well, that's the kind of fighting you're gonna cut your teeth on. Stay well spaced, be ready to take cover. Let's go. I want to let the enemy get in a position where they'll be caught in a crossfire. Yes, sir. Instruct the men to hold their fire till I give the command. Yes, sir.
Give him a taste of the big gun. Yes, sir. Nice gunfire by now. Thought I heard a cannon. Yeah, the cavalry didn't have a cannon. No, it's not too often they do. Well, it must have been the Raiders then, but I never heard of the Raiders using a cannon, have you? Nope. Quince and Scarlet are in that canyon. Well, I didn't send them. I know that. Look, I hired the men on as drovers, not as soldiers. I can't send anybody into that canyon. Well, maybe you can't send them, but you can sure shoot and lead them. They'd uh, have to be volunteers. Well, let's get to riding. Yeah, let's go. You're gonna need volunteers to stay behind. All right, Wish. Keep Barton, Little, and Mosier here with you. You're gonna be in charge. Me? And not go with you? Look, we don't need any mountain men. We need fast riders. Get your guns, all the ammunition you can carry. Mr. Favor, sir, you didn't say I have to stay behind, did you? Why, no, I didn't. Be careful. Try my best, then. Playing it safe, keeping us pinned down, waiting for night to rush us. I sure led these kids into a trap. You could know I was up in there. Firing by order of cannon. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was a military force we're up against. How could it be? The drovers, go report to the sergeant. Hurry up, the devil. Well, if they get bottled up in the canyon, head them off, Quince. Tell them to wait outside. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Colonel, I mean, Sergeant Matson. Raiders got him pinned down. They're not Raiders. Mr. Perky here came from the camp up there. It's a military camp. Huh? There's a company of Confederate soldiers up there. Soldiers that don't know the war's over. Well, that don't make sense. Still fighting for the South after all this time? But the whole world knows we lost the war. I was with them all this time. I was hoping the war was over, but I didn't know. Well, they didn't act like Confederate soldiers, raiding the countryside. Major Anderson called it requisition. Well, why didn't the requisitioners tell them then? The Major never let anybody close enough to him to tell him anything. I don't think he wanted to know. Look, you better get that information to the sergeant. Find out what he wants us to do. Yes, boss. Good to see you. Up there, Colonel. They're a company of Confederate soldiers. What are you talking about? <laughs> Prisoner escaped, told Mr. Favor. A company of Confederate soldiers. They don't know the war's over. It must be true. It would explain the cannon. It's the only one thing to do. I need a piece of white cloth. I got this. Tied on. Cease firing! Cease firing!
One of them's coming up the slope with a flag of troops. Oh, we can't let him get any closer, whatever he wants. Have some of the men fire in front of him. Yes, sir. Fletcher, all right. Fire one round in front of the enemy soldier approaching our camp. Boy, you're good, sir. Hold your fire! He was approaching under a flag of truce. Sergeant, come with me. You all right, soldier? Yeah, get up here. Need you. This is Colonel Thorpe. I served under him the first year of the war. Ridiculous. No Confederate officer would be wearing a uniform of a Union soldier? No more. Union soldier, Major. I'm glad you're not dead. I intend to have the man who shot you court-martialed. No more Union soldiers, Major. No more Union Army. You mean they surrendered? No, we did. Just a temporary setback. Major, General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Grant at Appomattox April 65. 1865? General Lee surrendered? Yes. Or would you mind getting me some medical attention? Come on, Colonel. I'll be up. That's it. That's it. Nice and easy now. Nice Belongs to you and your men, Major. It flew longer than any other Confederate flag. And I take it we're prisoners. No more prisoners. The war is over. We'll take you to Fort Flag for your honorable discharge. Then you're going home. Home? Dismantle camp, Sergeant. Get the men ready to move out. Yes, sir. All right, men, fall out and get your prisoners. Ready. 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 Mr. Perky? I don't know what to say. I'm going to miss our check again, Major. They uh, have those greenhorns hold up under fire. Greenhorns? Mr. Faber, you're talking about soldiers. It's been a long time, Mr. Faber. I'm kind of anxious to see my daughter again. So am I. so busy talking, forgot to thank you for that wonderful welcome home dinner you cooked. Welcome home dinner? I thought that was our everyday stew. Will you shut your flat mouth? Excuse me, Paul. There's something I have to attend to. Well, I suppose you'll be fixing up your ranch again. Uh -uh. I'll have to try city living. My daughter wants me to live in Philadelphia with her. Well, good luck, Mr. Perky. Thank you, Mushy. Aren't you rushing things a bit, Mr. Hoyt? I'm not rushing anything. We're ready to move out. Yeah? Well, maybe not all of you. I'm going home now with Pa and Nelson. I don't want to go. Yeah, but I'm a trail boss. Trail has to end sometime. Yeah. In October. Well, 
Good luck to you, Mr. Faber. Luck to you, Mr. Faber. She might not be singing in Philadelphia time you finish your job. Word will let her reach you. Kettleman's Association, Sedalia, Missouri. Thanks. Yankee gunman. You're not gonna let him get away. You clipped his horns enough for anything short of murder. What did he do? I said, what did he do? He was trespassing. We don't like trespassers on the range. Got a sign back there. Yeah, I saw the sign. Now I'd like to see your father. Go ahead, you lead out. Colby, we've been Colby. looking forward to getting here, getting that herd of yours. You can count me in on that, and the rest of the boys, too. Well, what he means is, with your herd along to pay trail expenses, we're going to split profits at the end of the trail with the rest of the men. Well, if you got your steers ready to move in here, we'll start road branding them right away. They're ready, Mr. Colby. My, uh, my foreman here, Drago Santee, will be glad to help you. I got a couple of boys out with the herd who'll give us a hand. Yank, go back to the herd and bring out three more men, will you? Wait a minute. Did you say Yank? That's right. Did you fight in the Union Army? Sure did. He's a blue belly. Caught. I'll, uh, I'll tell the boys. The war ended in 65. Not for me, it didn't. Did you fight in the war, son? 
Would have if I'd been old enough. God, go help Santee with the herd. Quinn, help me with the fires, will you? Mr. Kobe, gentlemen, I'm afraid sometimes my son says things he shouldn't. You see, back in 64, when he was just a little fellow, he saw our family home in Virginia, Buford Acres, burned to the ground. When Sheridan came raiding through the Shenandoah. Something like that would be pretty hard to forget. Even harder to forgive, Mr. Yates. Shortly after that, his mother died. Uh, Buford Acres meant a great deal to her. Well, you don't seem to be bitter, Major. Sometimes I think it's easier to fight through a war than to live through one. So I hope you'll try to understand my son's behavior, perhaps overlook his rash words. Sure. Only it wasn't me your son was pointing a gun at. Jed, uh, why don't you get those fire starters in? Sure. inspectors, the Cattlemen's Association. We aim to cut trail for these brands. I won't allow it. If it's all seem in order, all legal. Oh, I'm sure they're quite legal. Well, in that case, they got a right to look for strays. Bunch of men for brand cutting. I say that's a flying you. I'm repping for that brand, so cut it out of the herd. Well, you better take another look at that brand. And, mister, that still reads flying you to me, so if you're not going to cut him out, I will. Ha! Name's Miss Sharkoff. Howdy. I said howdy. Howdy. That's the trouble with folks nowadays. No time for conversation. Wouldn't you say? I'd say that. There's one of my brands. Bar 8 Open O. Gotta be kidding. Bar B U, Buford Beef. Are you telling me I can't read an association brand? It says so right here. Bar 8 open O. Well, I'm not arguing with the paper, but that steer is. You want me to have him thrown so that uh, you can talk it over with him face to face, huh? Mister, are you calling me a liar? Because if you are, you won't do it twice. Oh, no, I just think that you need glasses, that's all. Man with eyesight like yours gets in bad trouble. Trouble? No. Not now, anyway. Something wrong, Simon? Yeah, the inspector here says this beef belongs to him. That's right. Of all the cows, he took this bunch quitter. The exact one I tried to talk you and Rowdy into taking out of the herd and leaving it in the pen at Brazel. You call yourself a stock inspector? Even if you couldn't read the brand, one look at that steer ought to tell you it's been driven across San Burr country. That's your say. My word. And papers to back it up. From Brazos County, Texas, where we bought them, and from the man we bought them from. And that's our brand to prove we own them. 
That could be fixed up by anybody handy with a running iron. You accusing me of brand blotting? Well, at that, you do have the tools and the look of a brand artist. inspectors. There'll be no more trail cutting by you and those other tin horns. Well, you move this herd of cows any closer to the red, and you're going to run into a Winchester blockade, because I've got enough men to trail cut this herd to a thin pair of horns. You heard him. Call him off. Sure. And next time, I'm going to be ready for that draw of yours. Slim! Ed! We're pulling out. Let's go. Any help? No. Kobe just signed a peace treaty. I hope so. The fat man you just outdrew is the Wichita Kid, the association's best hired gun. That man you laid the rope to, the one you called Yankee Hired Gun? The cattle inspector, too, right? I mean, the real reason you ground drug him. Tell him, Court. Try to claim some of our beef and call my father a rustler. Nobody gets away with that. Major, just what is the County Cattlemen's Association? Most of the members are small cattlemen that were obliged to join. But the big man, he's a real big man, Duke Aberdeen. He formed the association and he runs it. A Yankee. Came to Texas after the war maverick and, and fought a big spread and just took over with those Yankee ways of his. Cord, cord. A lot of members of the association fought on our side. Well, a turncoats, that's what they are. Go on, Major. The association was formed to stop rustling. Well, I'm for that. Something's got to stop it. But I'm not for putting a levy on every head of cattle and sending up to Texas cow towns to get a bunch of gunmen down here to serve as stock inspectors. And I'm not for riding roughshod over folks, like, like you just saw. I saw. Well, Jed, it's about time we paid a little visit to this Aberdeen before we ran into some more of his friends. You were just reading my mind, Rowdy. You too, Jed. All right, Rowdy, you're calling it. I only hope you're figuring the odds right. I figure we've had just about enough trouble for one day. Let's go. My name's Yates. This here is Colby. We'd like to talk to you. All right. Come on. I've heard about you two. I'll bet you have. Your men were trying to uh, trim out our cattle. Cattle we bought from the Brazos County with our brand on it. Well, some of the boys might have been a little too enthusiastic. You see, they get $5 a head for every cow they return to an association member. I'll talk to them. You better do more than talk, Mr. Aberdeen. 
is we aim to make those few miles to the Red River without having our herd trimmed by your inspectors. Well, you're trailing Buford cattle along with your own, aren't you? That's right. Well, any time we find Buford cattle trying to leave this county, we're going to stop it. Matter of fact, we've been considering declaring Barbie U a rustler brand. Buford cows forfeit and divide it up among the members of the association. The law say you can do that? That's right, Gates. That's what the law around here says. Now, what you see around here, I built. And I didn't pour my blood into it to let any reb like Buford come and take it over. Now, I fought his kind once before. Like you said, I've got the men and guns to do it again. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Well, you too, that's different. How's it different? Now, look, Yates, this isn't your fight. Yours either, Colby. Now, why don't you just take your herd those few miles to the red and, like you said, cross over into the nations and leave Buford cattle on Bar BU range where we can keep an eye on it. You mean if we just take uh, our herd across, there's uh, no interference, huh? That's right. We just want to make sure that you're not trailing any Buford cattle along with your own. We got cows can read a brand better than some of your inspectors. Colby, next time you better bring your gun with you. been plumb before our fall and helped to lick it. What kind of confederate were you? Well, the doggone good one, Sonny. You're looking smack dab at a man that rode with Jeb Stewart, from Second Manassas to Yellow Tavern, where he was killed. Yeah, sir, he's the best cavalry general in two armies. Messenger you count Nathan Bedford Forrest. Or oh, little Phil himself. Oh, now you ain't gonna start that all over again, are you? You know dad gum well that Phil Sheridan couldn't shine Jeb Stewart's scabbard. Did you ride with Sheridan? Yeah. Chris Fella did. Were you with him in Shenandoah in 64? Yeah, I might have been. Will you help burn us out? Now look, will you just leave me alone? Think it will. Uh, I want to talk to you. Major, you signed your herd in with ours for just one reason. You were buying protection against Duke Aberdeen. Gentlemen, I assure you, Aberdeen wasn't nearly as difficult before I signed the deal with you. But you knew he might be a little hard nosed. Did he tell you I was rustling? Well, not exactly, but uh, that seemed to be what he was thinking. And you, Mr. Yates, what are you thinking? Well, if I even suspected you of uh, brand blotting, I wouldn't be sitting here talking. I'd just cut out your herd and move on our way. And you, Mr. Colby? Well, we're not about to turn trail and run away from a fight, but we got less than three months to get our herd to the Crow Reservation, and we don't want to get mixed up in any cattle war. That's right. We don't need anything impeding our progress. All right, gentlemen. I was wrong. You take your own herd across the red. I'll find some other way of dealing with the association. You understand, Major, that uh, my men share in the profits. They don't take a wage. So they got a right to help me decide. Now, it's true that Buford...
Buford didn't let us in on this Aberdeen situation when we contracted to take on his herd. But uh, the Major's been kind enough to say we could get out of the contract if we want it that way. Yeah, just take our own herd. At least we can break even that way. Maybe. But if Aberdeen says he'll trim our herds for Buford beef, well, you've seen the way his inspectors cut our brand. Well, they're a careless lot, and that's for sure. Aberdeen has enough law on his side, he could trim our herd and get away with it. On the other hand, if we stick with the Major here, we could end up in a range war, and that could be worse. See, we still haven't figured a way to get to that Winchester blockade. So we're dogged if we do, and we're dogged if we don't. Yeah, that's right. Now, uh, you boys want to think it over? both ways. Well, I don't like the way the association been pushing us around. I vote to stay with the major a couple of days and see what we come up with. I'm willing to stay and try to get through. I'll be doggone if I'm gonna sit still for those tin horns trimming off the herd. Am I losing one cent of my share? Money grubbing Yankee. Well, being a money grubbing Johnny Reb, I got my share spent on a little gal down Austin way, so I go along there with Yank. Us money grubbers got to stick together. I'm for staying. You sure change your mind in a hurry. Anybody can't change his mind, doesn't have a mind to change. And there's one other thing we've got to remember. Even if we do happen to get both those herds across the river, we're going to be in the nations. There's no law over there. No law saying that those beef inspectors couldn't follow us over, stampede the herd all the way from the Red to the Powder River. Gentlemen, if I could... Put in a word. Now, here's the Red River. Here's the nations up here. Over here, state of Arkansas, Little River County. Now, we're just about here, halfway between the nations and the state of Arkansas. Now, if instead of going north and crossing the river into the nations, we could travel east a few miles and cross into Arkansas. Well, Little River County's got a sheriff and deputies. They protect us. They're friends of mine. They're real lawmen. And those stock agents know it. They'd never dare follow us into Arkansas. What do you think, Jim? Well, I think we got a chance. We get past Aberdeen's men, find a ford. Hmm, well, looks like you're the last, uh... Bud in the kettle, as they say. Not me, Rowdy. Only reason I took to droving in the first place is because I figured it was the only place left where a man could ride the way he wanted to and not fight unless he wanted to. Hmm. Yeah, well, tomorrow I want you to take our herd over on Bar B U land. They got good grazing water there. I'll, uh, I'll scout that for it. we stopped him from Brandon belongs to that cow. And that cow's a flying you. That's an association brand. You're making a mistake, kid. I do work for the Duke. I tell you, I work for the Duke. Yeah, you work for the Duke, and I'm ramrod for Major Buford. Uh, well, I'll take care of him. I'll make sure he gets the law. Except maybe you were helping him to rustle, Yates. Uh, 
Hmm. He ain't got nothing to do with it. And what's he doing out here covering up tracks for you? Reek. Get his gun. I think maybe we'll celebrate with a little double necktie social. And maybe we'll go after Colby and dangle him, too. No, you don't. If it hadn't been for him, that Buford kid would have killed me. Brent, that don't change a thing. No! Well, you're lucky. He's the only brother I got. And if I had one to spare, you'd hang, too. Ask it to. He'll tell you I worked for him. Ask him. Ask him! All right. Let's get it over with. Ask him, kid! Ask him! Ask him! changing brands. That's part of the reason we headed here. We spotted a Maverick trail. Found fresh tracks back there. This horse and a couple of calves. And they're one pointing toward the herd. Yeah. All right, Simon, you just take him back to camp. Let's follow that trail. Huh? he was caught, Major. What do you mean by that? I think you were in this with Santee right up to your neck, only his got stretched. What? Boy, if you want a gun, just ask for it. I'm asking. Just stay out of this. Keep out of this, Rowdy. Quince, give me your gun. Santee. 
You couldn't have been. We were partners. I'm sorry, Gordon. Father, why? No particular reason. What brand was it, Major? My own, of course. Bobby, you. No, you're just saying that to save the boy. Santee ran a different brand. You had to know that, else you couldn't have wrestled the bees. That's why I had to let Colby here uh, draw down on the boy. I'm sorry about that, but uh, that's the only way I could find out. I'm afraid I can't take much credit for that, Major. You see, I wasn't sure myself whether or not you were in with Santee. I'm sorry. I'll understand. And Santee uh, sounded like he was just trying to save his neck when he said he worked for Aberdeen. Santee working for Duke Aberdeen. I can't believe it. Jed, I think it's time you and I had a little powwow with the uh, Duke, huh? Mm -hmm. Only this time I'll be wearing my gun. Rustling on Barbie, you? That's right, you did. Yeah, we found a few steers that Santee stashed away. Oh. Where'd he stash them? We'll give them back to you. Then we want to take our cattle through Texas without any more interference. Not Buford cattle, you don't. Why? You've already hung your rustler. Well, you don't think that. Buford's ramrod could have burned rawhide on Barbie U without the Major being in on it. Yeah, we did think that, but we were wrong. Just like we were wrong when we thought Santee saying he worked for you was just talk. Oh, you loco, both of you. Besides, if what you said made any sense, why would I let him get hung? Good timing, I'd call it. Nobody ever heard of a dead man doing much talking. And like you said, no one would ever believe that Santee could have burned rawhide on a Barbie U steer without the Major knowing about it. And now the Association will back any move you make against the Major. Uh, look, Yates, why don't you give me back those Russell bees and then take your own herd across the ranch? I won't cut trail on it. No interference. I'm taking both herds across the red. Well, look, nothing that belongs to that red bait cutter leaves this county. It was been over a long time, Aberdeen. It's about time you realize that. Now, hold up! Yates, you got until tomorrow to make up your mind. Whether you're there or not, we're taking over, Barbie, you. Oh, Yates, we know about that crossing into Arkansas that you found. Those boys who rode out, they've got orders to keep you from crossing that ford. One must I say different. You try it on your own, this time they'll shoot to kill them. I don't mean just cows. Hey, we take both herds and we move them into that valley so Aberdeen won't know where they are. But we're only going to be a few miles from the Arkansas Ford. Well, even before we move the cattle out of the valley, we got to get Aberdeen's hired guns away from that Ford. No, we, we, we got a decoy. See, we got to make them believe that we're somewhere where we ain't. Uh, that's the visionary. That's what they call it, the army. <laughs> and a nickel-plated champion of that was Jeb Stewart. He did a trick like that once at Second Bull Run. Jeb Stewart couldn't hold a candle to Little Phil. Or Custer. Custer? Now, with Custer. now you ain't gonna compare Goldilocks with what Jeb Stewart. What do you mean, Goldilocks? Will you two stop chomping on the past? <clears throat> All right. All right, Mint, go ahead and tell us about Stewart's neat little trick, huh? Well, sir, Second Bull Run, Stewart sent some of us cavalrymen out and chopped down some brush. And we drug it up and down the road in back of our horses. I'll be danged if it didn't fool the Yanks into thinking we had a whole army on its way. Hmm. Quince, uh, as soon as it gets dark, uh, I want you to take both herds and move them down that valley. The rest of us will take those Russell steers we found and move as far south as we can get them. Uh, Mr. Yates, hmm? Toba, what, what about me? I'd, I'd like to go with you. We don't have time to fight old wars. Now, once we get these Russell steers as far south as we can get them, Mint, Simon, Jed,
party.
This one's mine. Leave him to me. Hold it, Duke. By this time, the herd's already forded the red. What do you got to gain? Satisfaction. I warned you to stay out of this fight, but you threw in with that rev anyway. for now. What'd he do that? Hate? I guess he figured he had reason to hate. Maybe. Maybe so, but hate something you either bury, or it buries you. from St. Louis. Look at her taking the shine. Hey, Mac. Hey, you, Mac. Will you stop fooling with that pump handle? You go get them horses ready for delivery. That that trail boss is due here this morning. You see yonder? Here come Jesse now. Will you get them horses ready? Oh, that trail boss ain't likely to hang around here long enough for us to get the rest of our money. I said, get it! <laughs> He's a coming yonder, Ma. I got to hand it to you for getting him here. Oh, yeah. Sure. You already met my boy Jesse. This here's cousin Will. Did you bring me the rest of my money? No, the rest of the money's back with the herd. What you mean is back at the herd? Well, I already gave you a hundred dollars on deposit. Now I want to see the rest of the horses. Jesse and me brung you two of them horses to look at yesterday. You are acting like you don't trust us. The rest of the horses, ma'am. I'm Billy Lou. She ain't a guffler. She ain't no blood kin of ours. What you doing? I'll get my horses from somebody else. Can I have my deposit back, please? Well, you hold on, Mr. Trail Boss. <laughs> a deal is a deal. A deal, huh? You showed me two prime horses, said you had plenty more. You call those horses? You've seen all the horses you're going to see, mister. You hush up. Us gufflers ain't never let nobody out of a deal. You took a chance. We outsmarted you. Now, don't crowd me. Just... Give me my deposit, and I'll be on my way. I guess I forgot to introduce you to Skinner. Hey, Skinner! Didn't bring the money, did you? Well, you can't cheat a guffler. We're gonna teach him anyway. 
Ain't nobody nowhere, no time ever teach a governor. My pump hat. Look what you want and done. You want and bent my solid brass pump hat. Where you, hush up. You pay what mind you got to your mark. Well, what did I just say? You said nobody cheats a guffler. That's right. Now you haul him on into the house. I've got a little figure in that I gotta do. waterhole. Where's Rowdy? What's holding him up? Exactly what I've been saying. What's holding him and what's holding us from going after him? Orders, Wishbone. That's what. Orders from the trail boss. I'll tell you one thing. The herds graze this territory clean. It's like Jed says, the next water hole's a good day's push from here. So we better be doing something. Well, something must have gone wrong. I'll go after him. Hey, Simon. What'd you say the name of that family was? The, the Gufflers? Oh, yeah. They live in that broken down shack in the lower valley. Hey, who's that? I do. My name is Max. Max Guffler. You got something else to say? You better say it. You bet. Like what? Like where's Mr. Yates? You ain't got to worry none about him. We got him tied up, nice and neat. And he's gonna stay that way until you give us $3,000. Get off that horse. I'll tear you out in pieces, boy. Well, Ma told me to tell you, go right on ahead. Except she wants that $3,000, and, and, and if she don't get it by sundown, we're gonna wring your boss's neck just like a chicken. You mean hang him? You bet. We got us a cottonwood out in front of our place, right next to my brass handle pump. And we're fixing to use it. You ain't funny, boy. We got you now, and we're going to trade. You for Mr. Yates. I'll trade him piece by piece. I ain't smart like Molly's. She told me to tell you, don't be worrying none about trading, because one guffler don't make no difference to her like your trail boss does to you. Yeah, I can understand that. But I'm going to take you in anyway. Oh, my, is smart. She knowed you was going to say that, and she told me to bring you in, if you was of a mind to. Wish if this is a trick, we better leave most of the boys on herd. You, you make me itchy just looking at you. Now get up in your saddle and lead the way. You bet. Can't even squiggle none yet. <laughs> Mr. Trail Boss, your friend, come call. I think that neighborly. Oh, Max brought him. Unstrop his feet there, Will. So as he can walk, I'm tired of carrying. You used to wait in your chance, ain't you? That's all right. Well, you ain't gonna get it. Get me? Well, you get your head in a way like that, you deserve a kicking. You try that one more time, boy, and I'm gonna let him have at you. Now get yourself up. Let them friends of yours see that we've been treating you right. Better drag him outside so they can see him. Eh? Max hung four of them back. Now, yeah, boy, this gun's gonna be about that far from the back of your head.
You get my message? Ma, I said her, just like you told me to. How's ya? Did you bring me my 3,000? We sure did not. We don't carry that kind of money on a trail drive, Mrs. Guffler. Well, maybe you don't. But them couple of thousand head of cattle you're nursing along, they gotta be worth something. They gotta be worth plenty. You don't sell any of that herd, you understand? I told Max to tell you, you got till sundown to bring me that money. I said her, Ma. You got till sundown. Or I'm gonna hang your trail ball. Quince, you've seen the layout. Any way of approach me and Simon could have missed? Well, they got a man up on their roof. He can see everything in sight. I say, let's take them now. Well, they'd have a bullet and rowdy before we'd even get started. Well, why not offer the 900 rowdy gave you to pay for the horses? That old wildcat, she'd love to see me try. But I'll do it anyhow. You untie Mr. Yates and we'll turn over the 900 we had to pay for horses. No. That's what I say, too, mister. Turning down $900. Will you shut up? Ma, 900 is a whole bunch of money, now, ain't Hey, you shut your mouth, too. Besides, ain't just a matter of money no more. Now it's a matter of pride. Will you listen to who's talking about pride? Pride's what I said, and pride's what I mean, little man. <laughs> your man. Crawfished out on a deal we made fair and square. That's right. That's just what he done. Your man's causing me a lot of grief. First, he tried to steal a hundred dollars from us. And then he backs out on a deal we made fair and square. That's right. That's just what he done. Now, I gotta have your cattle. Or I gotta have that three thousand dollars. We didn't travel a thousand miles just to sell our cattle for less money than we paid for them. Besides, who'd we sell them to out here? All the same to me. You want your cows more than you want your boss. You got till sundown. Jesse, they're aiming to sell them cattle. They're going to have papers, ain't they? I don't know nothing about that, Ma. A trail boss likely got them papers on them right now. What do you find them for me? Jed, not one head of that herd, understand? Or you're fired. You're through. You throw him back in the house. One head. One head of those stairs and you're through. You got till sundown. I'd rather have the money, but I'll kill him just like that. If you try rushing us. I've got something to say, lady. Spit it out. We don't pay for dead trail bosses, except with a rope around your neck. You ain't showing much respect for your trail boss off of me. He crawfish out on a deal, he gonna pay for it with his money or with his neck. Oh, that woman. I believe she'd do it. The way in the world you trust that gal. Hey, Jeb, wait up. Look, you, uh, you actually believe they'd kill Rowdy for the pure pleasure of it? That kind likes killing. What if I ride to the nearest town for the sheriff? There isn't a sheriff within a hundred miles of here. And no town around here big enough to even spit on. Well, then we gotta try to sell that herd someplace and raise the money, that's all. Sure, where? We passed some kind of spread down south the river. I'll ride back and see what's what. You think you could find it? You're mighty well told. All right, Wish, you go ahead. Try and get that money somehow, but you get it. And just remember, we haven't got all week. You think I'm going to forget that? Simon, you and Quince go back and scout around the house. If there's any way of getting in without being seen, you hightail it back to the herd.
Untie me, will you? Hurt your head getting out of the window? No, no, no. Could you, could you get a knife and cut these ropes? <laughs> you so all fired anxious to leave me. No, you can come with me if you want, Billy Lou. But we gotta hurry. Otto, I hate that old woman. Yeah? She killed my pa just as if she held a gun to his head. And them two sons of hers, I can't make up my mind which of them's worse. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You, you go in there, sneak in there, and get a knife. I ain't soft in the head. <laughs> I don't buy what I ain't looked over. Real careful. We don't have any time. My, that is pretty hair. <laughs> you think I'm at all pretty, Mr. Cowman? Sure. <laughs> well, you give me if I come away with you. Anything, anything at all, Billy Lou. <laughs> You'd promise me the moon, wouldn't you? All tied up like you are. But what I'd probably wind up with is a bullet in the back or maybe Ma's hands are on my throat. I uh, know. <laughs> but I sure do like you. A whole lot. Skitters, get out the window! Um, uh, when I get my money, I'm going to buy me a real high prancing white mule and some mining equipment and go to mining me a gold mine all to my own self. <laughs> Listen, old ugly, he's a gold mine. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of gold in the ground if and you got the patience to look for it. <laughs> Maybe I'll go to San Francisco, too. Well, if you're all right, I'll take you along with me. Where I'd go, they wouldn't let you walk down the street. <laughs> <laughs> they got beautiful houses there and millions of gas lights. And folks to wait on you. And the men, they kiss the ladies' hands. <laughs> you think they're going to let you get anywhere near them high-toned places? You just never mind about me. I'll make out just fine. You, you know what I think? I think Billy Lou's kind of sweet on that cowboy in another room. You just think about your old mule and never mind about me. And you know what? I don't guess so just likes it too much. Because he wants Billy Lou to be sweet on his own self. <laughs> Boy, you better shut your mouth. I see a whole lot more than folks know, don't I, Ma? Hi, sir. Oh, Jess thinks he's such a mush. I just bet Billy Lou wouldn't even spit on him if he's a burning up on fire. Now, stop uh, that headed weasel. I'm going to pop you open and see if you're full of air like a dead goat. Ma, don't let him do it. Don't let him stick me, Ma. I don't care if it does stick him. My head hurts with all this talkity talk. Ma, I'll be good. Tell him to tell you something. Jesse, will you stop teasing him? I ain't teasing. I hate this tub of lard. Mm. He ain't worth the food he eats. Mm. Food he eats. Ah, I said leave him face. Good for you. And don't you start nothing. I'll wallop you lopsided. You don't lay a hand on me. It's that drover that's a making all this trouble, Ma. Quick as we get that money, we're going to get shut of him. Hi, Jeff. Maybe I'll take him to San Francisco with me. Oh. You'd have him make a pair, wouldn't you? When I get my gold mine, I'm going to get on my mule and go to San Francisco my own son. All this talk about big cities. Gold mines, there's more than a good chance them cowmen won't even come back. Unless they come with a posse or the rest of their drovers. You think they want him dead, Ma? I think they're going to try to raise some money. But if they don't, they might just decide to shoot it out with it. So let them. Ain't nobody going to get to us. If they do come back, we are going to dick up. But you said that... I said, dick them. We give them back the trail, boss. They give us half their cattle. All signed over. Legal and clear. That there's a good idea, Ma. I prefer to have the money. But there's more than one way to skin a possum. I just seen a couple of possums out back in the gulch there behind the house. Nice big ones. Riding horses. You hear that? You get back to your chimney, Cousin Will, you come along with me. 
What do you say? 60, 70 yards, maybe? Yeah, I'd say about that. And not a drop of cover between here and our house. They'll pick us off like partridges. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all open ground this way. What do you say we follow this royal and see how close it comes to the house? All right. we got here a prime pair of overgrown groundhog this ain't very bright of you boys boss gonna get you is a hide full of buckshot and one dead trail boss you want us to kill him i reckon it ought to have one chance but that chance is the only one you hear me how will you get You saw how they'd let my men kill you. Your own brother laughed. I hate Jess. He scares me. Makes me feel bad. But my ma wouldn't let nobody to kill me. All she cares about is money and Jesse. A man like you deserves respect from his mother. Well, everybody else. They get respect in this world nowadays. And gotta have money, gold. You know, I knew an old prospector once. Told me where I could find all the gold I'd ever need. Um, where at was it? <laughs> oh, oh, he showed me a map had all kinds of directions on it. Really got me thinking. Got me thinking about prospecting for gold, you know. Make a fortune, be a really big man in this country. You, you, you bet. Right. You, Ma wants you. Um, uh... She's a real prospecting map, huh? Mm, real. Miss me, big cow man? You want me to catch it loose, honey? Yeah, it was doing a good to ask. <laughs> well, keep asking. I'm powerful changeable. Everybody says so. Yeah, you proved that out there a while ago. You mean because I hollered Skinner down on you? That's right. Uh, well, there wasn't nothing else I could do. You could have cut me loose, let me get out of here. Well, how'd I ever get free of this place if, if I'd done that? Oh, I got a fair share coming from the money I get for you. And this time they ain't gonna cheat me out of it. I'm gonna get enough so I can go away for good. And get to San Francisco. You ever been there? Yeah, once. Oh, tell me about it. Hey, you want something? Uh, some liquor? A cigarette? You tell me about it and I'll roll one for you. I guess I could use a smoke. <laughs> Last year, a peddler fella, he told me about it. He said they had a big singing house there. And the women wore long coats and velvet wraps, gloves. Is that true? Yeah, they got some places they do that. If you were there, you'd look just as good as any of them. <clears throat> but uh, they're never going to let you go. Ma and Jesse and them, you mean, huh? That's right. You see, even if they got money from me, and they won't, they're going to have to split it up six ways. Now, one-sixth, that, uh, that wouldn't get you to Santa Fe, much less San Francisco. You get away from him. I want you to stop all this cozying up business. I don't trust this fella. Even if he is tied up. I don't trust you neither. Well, you get on our side. You help him hang up the rest of that wall.
Hey, Ma. I believe the place is on fire. The Arroyo runs behind like this. Now the closest we can get without being seen is here. Now between here and the house, it's open ground. Yeah, and before we get across there, they'd have Rowdy hung ten times over. Well, I wouldn't figure on going across the open ground. You got an idea? Yeah. It gives an outside chance of getting in close, but I'd hate to have to try it. Well, if Wishbone don't get back with that money soon, we're gonna have to try something. Well, it's almost sundown. All ready for you, Mr. Trail Boss. Even just enough slack so as you can breathe. so hard for us to keep track of you out here. And you ain't likely to get in much trouble up there, are you? It doesn't well. You keep an eye out from up there. You'll have that stuff all over the prairie. No sign of wish? No. So here he comes. You finished with that, Quince? It's the last one, Jed. I think Let we're me. ready to go. Let me have it. Nothing? Nothing. And it's the only ranch in 50 miles, and they don't have any payroll and won't have. They did offer us a gun hand or two. Well, we can't move with the men we got. It's all this. What may be our last chance? We've got to do something to draw their attention away from Rowdy. That's your job. What do you mean my job? Well, we can't take any men in there. They'd spot us so fast, they'd have Rowdy swinging before we could get a single shot off. Yeah, but well, what do you want me to do? I'll tell you about it on the way. Times are wasting. All set? We're ready. Well, let's move out. You still there, Mr. Cowboy? They're still here. <laughs> I kind of figured that you wasn't going to go no place. It won't be long now. You mean till my men ride in here and run the lot of you off? You know what I mean. <laughs> Two hours? You can stand that, can't you? <laughs> now, old Ma in there, she's uh, wanting all that money. But me, it'd suit me fine if your man didn't come. In that way, it would pleasure me of pulling on this rope. Like this. <laughs> hey, you tired? You want to sit down? Here, go ahead, sit down there. <laughs> What's that you say? Huh? I can't quite hear you. Oh, water. Oh, why, sure, I can hear that real good now. You say water, and old Jesse, he's gonna fetch water for you, boy. Anything you want from old Jesse is yours. Anything you want, yes, sir. <laughs> Shame. You ain't gonna get no cold drink of water today. Can't believe all of him. I seen you choking at him. Now you kill him, and we don't get that money. You know what Ma's gonna do to you? If and I wanna kill him, I'll kill him. How'd you like it if I holler for Ma, huh? Don't you hit me, I'll holler. I will. Skinner. You keep an eye on him, too.
be sundown before long. Don't look like nobody's coming for you. They'll come. Give any more thought to being cut in on that big money rather than hanging somebody? You better have. Um, uh, that map you are talking about with that gold, she's a good one, ain't she? The best. The essayer man at Clover City said he, best one he's ever seen. Um, uh, that mining feller is, is a good friend of yours. Real good. Hey, some fellas has all the luck, don't they? Could be your luck too, Max. You plenty of money there for three people. I'm willing to cut you in on my share. You would for sure? Darn right. If you be my friend, get me out of here. Back me up. Oh, I'm your friend. I'm your friend. But you gotta prove it. You bet. You just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Go on, tell me. Well, you get me untied and then let me get my horse. Old Ma says, she's a gonna wring your neck like a chicken come sundown if your friends don't come with $3,000. Yeah, well, she can't do any ringing if I'm not here. I don't guess. She can't do anything to you either because you'll be right there with me, right? Oh, Ma, she could come a-trackin' us, so. though. No, I ain't gonna let her touch you, I'll tell you. Cause you're my friend. That's right. Now, you gotta back me up. Help me get untied. Sure. You think I ain't smart, don't you? Oh, no, I don't Oh, you that. bet. You you think I'm slow just like all of them says I am. Honest thing, I know when I'm a being fooled. Because if there's so much gold in that hole, how come you ain't rich? Well, I'll tell you why. The war came along. It took five years out of my life. And even if you got a perfect map where gold is, you got to have a stake to go digging for it. Well, that's why I've been working cattle all these years, so I could save up enough. And now you got her. That's right, I got plenty. And you're gonna take old Max with you? That's right, I'm taking my friend Max. Cause I'm your friend. That's right, that's right. Now, come on, get me untied. Only if I was to find out you was lying to me, I'd just kill you quick. Well, are you gonna find out if I'm telling the truth unless you give me a chance to prove it? Untie me. You bet. Jack, burn you, Max. Jack, burn you too, cowboy. Boy, you get to him. That's cause he ain't so bright, but I'm gonna fix you good. All right, this is where we'll split. Wish is gonna ride ahead and wait for the signal. The rest of you go with Quince and Simon. And timing is going to be everything, so don't make a move until I give the signal. But you can't go in there alone. You better let me go in there with you. They wouldn't let more than one man in. I better make it alone. Bring me my money. Hand it over. 
Well, Mrs. Guffler, it ain't easy to raise that kind of money around here. Well, what'd you come here for? I ain't about to hang around, listen to your tongue flapping. Well, I kind of thought we could talk things over. I don't know what he come here for, Ma, but it ain't just to talk. Don't you take your eye off him, Skinner. She thinks I'm trying to be tricky. Like those Kiowas we met last year. when they tried a bunch of signals to spook off the herd. Remember? I don't care about any tricks or anything else. Just don't you sell any of my herd, understand? They'd probably hang me anyway. Us Gufflers don't skunk out on deals. We make a bargain. We stick to it. Maybe you fellas don't. Maybe you got other plans. <laughs> Drink, Mrs. Guffler. Hey, you, Mac. You mind your manners. Give him a drink of water. Thank you, ma'am. to be here. Of course it's all there. You still don't trust us. And do I, Lou? Guess I owe you something for trying to help out. That'll get you a start towards San Francisco, wherever it is you want to go. Hey, Max? Um, uh, that there gold mine you are talking about, it never was one, was there? Uh, I'm sorry about that. I knew it. I, I knew her all the time. Thanks for your hospitality, ma'am. serious old gentleman. But I figure any power that could create the cow has got to have a strong sense of humor. Nothing uglier, more contrary, or more stupid ever drew breath, unless it's the men who push it. I know I'm one of the men who pushes it. I'm Gil Favor, trail boss. What do you want to do, lie there 
ready to take root? Come on, let's go. Time's getting to be wish. Almost 4.30. You ever tell time with a one-handed watch? Count the number of times a hand goes around. Oh. Four thirty. Boy, they sure getting worse all the time. Act like a bunch of European princesses. One man up out of the whole bunch. Who is it, Lou Paris? Right. He's riding point today. I want to talk to him. Where is he? I almost hate to tell you. Taking a bath. Another one? That's what I told him. I said, Lou, someday you're going to kill yourself. All that water, it ain't healthy. And you know what he said? Mm. He said it closed his pores. No. That's what he said. Here. How long you been there? Come in last night. Now, this man, well, he's curly haired, about 24. He'd be riding down from Red River Station. Mm, I haven't seen him. What do you want him for? He probably couldn't have got this far anyway, Junkin. Well, he could have got twice this far. He's strong as an ox. Took the whole door with him when he broke out. You lawmen? Nope. This fella, if you do see him, you'd better keep your distance. Why? He's... He's uh, dangerous. Come on, Wiley. Thank I try to warn you, Mr. Favor. I come on him when I was swimming. Is it what I think it is, Lou? Yes, sir. No wonder they didn't want to talk about him. Sir? When did you come across him? Uh, five, ten minutes ago. I was going to ride back to the herd and tell you all to keep away. You ever had what he had, Mr. Favor? No. How about you? I'm all right. I've been scratched. This here's the scar. Now, that means I can't catch nothing. And they've been doing a lot of this in the East. I got it done before I come out here. You think that might help me, Lou? Well... Too late, huh? You ought to see a doctor, Mr. Favor. He'd be able to tell you better than me. There ought to be one at the Red River Station. It's overnight from here, but I think it's important enough for you to take the time. Well, um, we'll move them open those loose rocks there. Yes, sir.
ready to go for a half hour now. When you came by, you're gonna have to take over the herd for a while. What for? Lou and I gotta go into Red River Station. Well, why? Well, uh, we're gonna have to buy our way through some of this land. I'll have to see the man who owns it. I think Lou can help me. Well, I guess I'll see you later then, huh? You don't think he should have told him, do you, Mr. Paver? He'll be wondering. No, oh, you swore in him. He'll have enough to do moving the herd. Let's go. I left Quince with the herd. With what you said about uh, buying your way through this country just didn't seem right to me. I, I thought maybe you'd need some help or something. Don't touch that! I told you to stay away! What do you got ears for? I thought you were in trouble or something. If I was, it was my trouble. Lou. Lou, he touched me on the shoulder. Is that enough to do it? Well, if you've got it, he's got it. Got what? Pox. What pox? You understand what I'm saying? Small pox. Small pox? Back at the lake, we found a fella dead of it. We just buried him when you come up. We decided we'd look for a doctor, for Mr. Favor in Red River Station. Anybody follow you here? Oh. Guess he'll be needing a doc now, too, huh? All right, let's mount up. Don't seem to be lined up, do they? Well, I'll see if he's around. Graduated kind of young this year. Well, hello. Hi. Are you the doctor? <laughs> you know where he's at? Well, uh, would you mind showing us, son? What's the bag for? Keep sickness away. What kind of medicine is Dr. practicing anyway, voodoo? Well, I got a lot of faith in what doctors are doing nowadays, Mr. Favor. Maybe it's some kind of a new idea. Oh, that's nothing new. That's an acepididine bag. Can't you smell it? Well, let's talk to the doc anyhow. You can't hurt nothing. Ram 
entertainment. Hi. Hey, Junkin, come here. Look. What are you doing outside? Now, what did Grandpa tell you about leaving the house? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Here, let me have him, Papa. Yeah, uh, you go on in with Grandpa. Oh. My cow! My cow! Grandpa will fix it for you. You don't understand. This is a plague town. If anything happened to him, why, we Looks like a healthy youngster. You're the trail boss I met this morning. That's right. Did you happen to come across the fellow we was looking for? Yeah, we found him. Dead? Afraid so. We, uh... We give him a decent burial. I thank you. Is he a friend of yours? The boy's father. My son. I'm much obliged to you for coming by and telling us. I wouldn't stick around town, though, if I was you. Not unless you already had the smallpox. Are uh, you the only doctor in town? No, I ain't a doctor, but I can help you. I still got some asafetity bags left, and my wife's brewing up some more herb tea. If you're feeling feverish, I could bleed you, but you'll have to wait at the end of the line. Well, mister, that won't do no good, bleeding. Herb tea? You know a better way of holding off the smallpox? Vaccination. Uh, vaccination? You mean sticking germs in healthy bodies? Well, sure, it works. Uh, it can't work. It worked on me. If you believe that, boy, I feel sorry for you. And I'm telling you to get on your horse and get out of town now, because you're a danger to yourself and everybody you meet. Well, mister, you're the one that's dangerous, thinking the way you do. Listen to him, Junkie. He's worse than Flood. Flood? The doctor? Is he still around? Yeah. Well, where could we find him? Take the north road, go out about a mile. See a barn out there with a guard out in front. Most likely Flood will be there. Thanks. Mister? You can talk to Flood all you want. When you're through, you keep on heading north. Because if you ain't got the smallpox now, you'll have it then. You'll be next to dead, mister, wherever you're going. So don't come back here. Something out of my last nightmare. Well, that must have been a screamer. Yeah, it was. Boogie's out front. Doctor must be around somewhere. Well, you two better stay back. Well, maybe you got it, maybe you ain't. No sense taking chances. I'll bring him out. I'm just looking for Doc Flood. Doc! He can't hear? Well, I'll get him myself. Just a minute. Look, it's my life, ain't it? If I want to risk it, what's it to you? It leaves nothing to me. Well, then let me in. That's all you care? Go ahead. But you ain't getting out. Nobody's getting out, except the doc. Can I yell in the window? Suit yourself. Doc Flood. I want to speak to Doc Flood. You, Doc Flood? That's right. Who are you? My name's Lou Paris, I'm a trail drover. I got a couple of friends who might have the smallpox. How about taking a look at them? Mister, are you sure you want me? Well, you're a doc, ain't you? 
I don't use leeches, and I don't have any asafetida bags. Glad to hear it. Come on. Well, looks like Lou had some luck. This here's my boss, Mr. Favor, Rowdy Yates. This here's the doctor. Solomon Flood. Uh, let me see your hands. How do you feel? Pretty good. Any chills, fever? No, nope, not yet. And you? No, uh -huh. Let me see your hands. Mm-hmm. When were you exposed? About sunup yesterday. Mm-hmm. Well, it's hard to tell about this until two or three days have passed. It looks to me like uh, you two may have missed it. Doesn't it seem like kind of a waste of good whiskey? <laughs> Germ killer. Whiskey? Whiskey. Well, say, Doctor, uh, this vaccination Lou keeps talking about, does it really prevent the smallpox? Where did you hear about vaccination? Well, I got one here. Who did it? Doctor in Boston, Nima Parker. Well, there are very few people around here that believe in vaccination. You believe in it? Like it was gospel. All right, we'll take a shot at it. What's the matter? Did you ever spend any time in drought country? Well, once or twice. How did you feel when the first rains came? Well, it was a bit crazy, like nothing was quite real. That's just the way I feel right now. After fighting and getting no place, you come along with an open mind and willing to take a chance, and I can't help you. Raining for me, all right, and all I have here are my fingers to catch it in. Are you, are you trying to say you don't have any of this stuff? Not a drop. Look, I got 20 men pushing a herd north. Uh, how wide a berth we have to give this town to be safe? Well, it's hard to tell. It may have confined itself just to the town, or it may have spread 10, 20 miles in every direction. I just don't know. What do you know, Doc? Well, two or three days ago, I heard a rumor. The Army's afraid of a widespread epidemic. So they're supposed to be sending a shipment of this vaccine to Fort Jackman. The Army believes this new stuff will work? Well, they seem to believe in it enough to try it. Now, if you could pick up this patrol, they'd probably give you enough vaccine for all your men. And for anybody else, I might be able to talk into taking it. Would we be apt to run into this patrol? Are you familiar with this country? No. Lou here is. I sure am. Well, here. Now, you ride due east of the mountains. The Jackman Trail runs north and south along the foothills. Now, it's doubtful that this patrol has gotten this far north. So you ride south. Well, thanks, Doc. We'll find it. Well, I was sort of hoping that you'd stay. Me? Why? Well, I'd like to show you off to the town, make them believe that this vaccination works. Well, the uh, truth is, I already showed off a little bit. It wasn't what you call a real big success. Well, Mr. Paris, one of the first things I learned as a doctor was that nothing in medicine at first is a big success. And just because the pupils learn slowly is no reason for the teacher to run off and quit. All right, Doc. Let you and me start teaching. <laughs> I hope you find that patrol. It's where you say it is. We'll find it. Roddy Yates. Lieutenant Shaw. Are you the fellas that are taking the smallpox stuff to the fort? Sergeant. Sir. Lead out. Yes, sir. Detail. Forward. Wait a minute. Hold it, Sergeant. My friend asked you a question. Yeah, I heard him. Well, suppose you answer him then. 
It's none of your friend's business what this detail's carrying, mister. Look, we just came from a town a little west of here, Red River Station. The doctor would appreciate it if you could spare some of that vaccine you're carrying. I have orders to deliver certain medical supplies to Fort Jackman. My men are dying there. These medical supplies are supposed to put an end to the dying. You don't think the medicine will do it? I have no official opinion. Well, what's your unofficial opinion, then? My unofficial opinion is to deliver these medical supplies to Fort Jackman, whether I like it or not. Look, Lieutenant, men are dying at the Red River Station. Now, they're not soldiers, but they've got wives, children, too. Yeah, I understand that. And here's another unofficial opinion. I don't believe in putting more of the disease that's attacking them into their veins. But where would the civilians be if the army that's protecting them didn't obey orders? If army men die first, maybe this stuff won't be foisted on the civilians. Unofficial opinion. Sergeant. Detail! What? Hold it. Now, what do you think you're up to? You'd uh, better let me have some of that stuff you don't believe in. You're two against seven. One word from me, and you don't exist. You'd better make that two that won't exist. Are you trying to impede this detail's progress? Only if the detail refuses a request for help. My orders don't include a request for help. Lieutenant, you're going to have to pass your patrol through me. Open fire. Sir, couldn't you let him have what he asks for? None of us. That includes you, sir. Thinks we'll lose anything by letting him have some of that stuff we're carrying. I gave a command. The medicine lieutenant? Much to tell. You just pick up blue. Didn't think you paid any attention to us, and you didn't, did you? We're not coming into town. You've been out at the pest house, ain't you? Who are you to be asking where we've been? I got a family that gives me the right to ask you. We all got families. Now answer me. You stopped outside it. They breathe the air outside the pest house. All right, drovers, get off those horses and get off fast. We haven't done anything they can shoot us for. Get down before I blow your head off! I told you to keep going once you left this town. Now you come back here to spread the disease. What makes you so sure I'm spreading it? Because your friend with the vaccination got it. And you and this fellow that got away was riding with him. Can't you get it through your head? Luke Paris is no danger to you. He's been scratched. Impossible for him to get it. Impossible? He's down with it. Can't be. It's a fraud, that vaccination. All a fraud. I offered you herbs. I was willing to bleed you, but no, you wouldn't listen to me. Well, there'll be no more offers. No more begging. While he get the horses. You walk. Where? Walk! Hold it! Go ahead, mister. Your pal Lou is waiting for you in there. Come on. Get off, mister. Just go on the step. Favor. Are you all right? Are you hurt? 
hurt? I'm all right. Where's your friend? Get away. With the vaccine, is it safe? There's no vaccine. What happened? What's been happening here? Junkin said that Lou Paris had the smallpox. Is it true? Well, is it true? It came on him all of a sudden. He's over there. He's pretty bad. No, I, I wouldn't go over there. Won't do any good. He's out of his head. It wasn't any use after all. That's not true, Mr. Faber. And Lou would be the first one to tell you if he could. But his vaccination is over eight years old. I just learned that this afternoon. Eight years, 2050. What's the difference? Well, it loses his strength. That's the difference. We can't be sure how long the immunity lasts. Jenna himself, the man who discovered it, thought it was good for a lifetime. Well, maybe it's good for seven years, five years, four years. We don't know. The point is, it has to be taken over and over again to be certain. I'd say every two or three years to be sure. Then a man would be safe. Until the time is cut down to seven months, then seven days, and seven minutes. Don't close your mind to the truth, Mr. Faber, just because Lou Parrish made a mistake. Doesn't matter. Not anymore, anyway. Let me see that. Come here. You know what that is? Fox. Poison oak. Poison? For a fact? For a fact. <laughs> Guard! Guard! Yeah? Let this man out. He doesn't have smallpox. He will. Guard! Guard! Uh, forget it. He's right. Maybe not. Some people have a natural immunity to this. Maybe you're one of them. We don't know how or why, but a couple of hours, we'll know the truth. Yeah. Now, you stay away from these people. Don't go near them for any reason. I'll have to get in touch with Junkin. He'll give the order to get you out of here. Junkin? You're wasting your time. No, he's not a villain. He's just a man that's afraid for his family and for his town. He'll listen. God! God! Let me out of here. make my skin crawl. Asa, for the love of heaven, will you please... I said no, Sal. No, no. But keeping that trail boss in there is no better than murder. He ain't gonna run loose in this town. Infecting everybody that he sees and everybody that he talks to. Grandpa, when you gonna fix this? Hannah, will you please put the boy to bed? Grandpa's tired, honey. Run along. Maybe Sal's right. I mean, if the man hasn't got the... What are you crossing me for? What's the matter with everybody? You're a tired man. Well, sure, I'm tired. I'm tired enough to sleep for 40 years, but I can't. Who else cares enough about this town to try to save it? You, Sal, with your fancy cures that never work? What, do you think it's a pleasure to handle these leeches? It makes me sick in my stomach. When I do it, somebody's got to do it. Why, Junkin? Maybe it ain't worth the bother. What are you talking about? A, a couple of hours ago, down at the saloon, I, I seen Ben Coleman. He says now two more in his family got the rash. His wife and daughter. Well, you bled them. They took the herbs. They wore the ass affinity bags. Are you against me too, Wiley? Oh, no, you, you know better than that. It's just that... It's I'm just not... that you expect miracles, don't you, boy? Well, there ain't no miracles. There's just luck and hope. Common sense. It ain't that we don't appreciate what you're doing. You appreciate nothing. I ought to leave you flat, all of you. You and your diseased families and your diseased cattle. What's this about cattle? 
He's talking about my herd. Half of them got the cowpox. I thought your sick cows died. Some of them did. Some of them are hanging on. I'd like to see them, Wiley. What for? Could I look them over, Wiley? Not if you're going to try some of your fancy medical tricks. Now, you have nothing to say about this. I've got all to say. This town wouldn't be on the map if it wasn't for me. I saved it while you was off dreaming about vaccinations. I make the decisions here because I earned the right to make them. Wiley? No, I... I'll stick with Junker. doing back here? Your boss said you got away. Well, where is he? At the pest house. Not because of smallpox. Because of panic. Well, I'll get him out of there. You want to help? You bet your bottom dollar I do. All right, where's his horse? At the livery stable. I'll go get it. I'll meet you outside of town. <laughs> I told you to stay away from them. How do you feel? Like blue, dead. You were right about Junkin. He's not thinking anymore. He's like a fighter that's been beaten and doesn't want anyone else to know about it. Bart keeps swinging away because he's too tired to win and afraid to quit. The people are turning against him. That's what's killing him inside. He can't stop the smallpox, and they know it now. I talked to a couple of them. They may be ready now to accept a new remedy, like vaccination. Trouble is, it's too new. They don't understand it. They need somebody to go first. Somebody like you. You want to vaccinate me? After this? But I explained about Lou. That doesn't mean all vaccinations are a failure. It protected him till it wore out. You're what they call immune. Vaccination wouldn't take with you. And if you'd be an example... Immune? You mean I can't get the disease? I could get out of here and not give it to anybody else? Not only could you get out, but you will get out. Look. Hello, boss. Tell me about Lou. He's gone, huh? Hello. 
wood's pretty rotten about the, around these bars. This'll be like opening a tin of crackers. Well, Mr. Taylor? There's no vaccine anyway. I'll make some. I've studied Jenna's methods. It's made out of cowpox, and there's cowpox in this town right now. Stay over. Let me vaccinate your men. This means I'm too flat. I'm no singer. No madman, either. Just a working trail boss. Uh, maybe I'd even try some of this Eastern vaccine. Even after what happened to Lou. But you're asking me to risk the lives of 20 men on just nothing more than your say-so. You're gonna make a batch of vaccine. Well, what in the name of heaven have you done that I should trust you? Nothing. But I'm still asking you to trust me. You are. For the sake of the people this vaccine will save. You mean the people who threw me in here? Yes. Well, forget it. This next one's gonna make some noise when it comes off. What about the guards? Uh, go ahead. No, wait. You'll never get out like that. I'll keep the guard busy. When you hear me arguing with him, then you make your break. Good luck. Thanks. Guard! Guard! Let me out. Wait a minute. What's this? What do you mean, what's this? The rash. Rash? I don't see any rash. You've got smallpox. Smallpox? I couldn't have. Well, who says you couldn't have? Well, I already had it. Well, you, who says you couldn't have it again? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. Hey, Paul! Around the back! Hey, the horses. Two Ben. And where's Lou? Now you take care of the horses, will you? Pete, I want to see you. Oh. Oh, what's the matter with him? Huh? What's the matter with him? Oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. He's milling some problem over in his mind. You know what problem? Well, let's see. From what I know about the good book, why don't you take a check at uh, Genesis 4, verse 9? All right. Bypass Red River Station. Circle around to the east. Lands flat to the foothills. Right. Pull out at sunup. Want every man ready. No waiting, no excuses. Boss, what's happening? That's all, Pete. Yes, sir. said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? You sure nobody else got away? Just the trail boss. How's Paul? Bullet clipped his ear, knocked him out. But he's all right now. He's watching the place. Uh, at flood? Gone when I come to. But I know where he is. Where? Wiley's barn. Jack, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong, honey. Go on back to bed.
think you better get out of here, Doc. Junkin's not going to take kind of him. i let me in like this. How many people are out there now? Well, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe more. Well, I'll be through in a minute. Tell them I'll vaccinate anyone who wants it. How about you going first, Wiley? Uh, I'll tell them. You wouldn't listen to me, would you, Sal? If you're talking about the trail boss, you're... I am listen. talking about the trail boss. Well, you were wrong to put him in there, Junkin. I told you you didn't have smallpox. Sal, you recollect what we decided we'd do to anybody escaping from the pest house? Or anybody helped them to escape? I remember you made up a law, yourself, and a punishment. We decided they'd be shot. Junkin, put down the gun. Let's talk this over. Sure, you're a good talker, you are. You're so good, you can talk out of both sides of your mouth at once. Oh, John, you say one thing to me, then you turn around, you open up your barn to him. Look at it. You want the blood of disease cattle in your veins? Listen to me. This is the Jenner method. It's been used in England for 50 years. It's safe and it's certain. It's certain death. Couldn't be any more certain you than shut you. Shut up, you. You're the one that's been turning them against me. Keeping them away from me. Well, no more. You would blood go first. Then the trail boss. Why not the trail boss first, Junkin? <laughs> Junkin! Junkin! Your missus. She's got the rash. Got it. Thanks for coming back, Mr. Faber. I brought some of my men. The rest will be along in shifts. You mean you uh, want him to vaccinate you? Sorry, but you're going to have to wait your turn. My men go first. Where's Bone? Can I say goodnight to Grandma after Ma drive me? Oh, Papa. Over there. Oh, yes. Ah, 
Didn't take you long to get here. What's going on? Well, read the sign. Red River Station getting itself vaccinated. Where'd they get the vaccine? Dr. Flood made up a homemade batch. These people believe in this? They believe in trying to stay alive. Well, you are looking for someone. I am. I'm looking for a man who held up an army detail. You see him? You see the man we want, Sergeant? All I saw, Lieutenant. There were a lot of fresh graves as we rode in. That's not what I asked you. Do you see the man we want? No, sir. Neither do I. Oh, uh, if you run into him, it's your duty as a citizen to report his whereabouts to the Army. Right, Lieutenant. And if I ever catch up with him, I'll throw a military coin at him so fast, he won't know what hit him. Well, I'll remember that, Lieutenant. Raymond. 